Notion's timeline view allows you to view database items along a linear timeline, like a Gantt chart. It offers a pleasing way of visualizing your database items chronologically while exposing any potential capacity issues. This makes timelines useful for displaying a project's tasks, event series, and other items that span various durations. So let's cover the fundamentals of the timeline view using two practical examples. And for your reference, as you practice with timelines, those examples are available as a template on Notion Market, which you'll find linked within the video description. But first, let's very briefly review Notion databases for some context. So in Notion, a database is a collection of items with common properties. So a database of cars, for example, might have properties for make, model, and year. And you can think about a database as a table where each item is a row and the properties are columns. And then for any database, you can create multiple views, which are kind of pre-configured options like filters, sorting rules, and displayed and hidden properties. And each view also presents its items in a specified format, such, a, such as the default table view, a list, a calendar, a Kanban style board, or a gallery of cards. And so the timeline is the newest addition to these database formats. So here we have kind of a simplified collection of a project's tasks. And you can see that this tasks database has four properties. The title property is called task. Then we have a date property to indicate the period in which the task will be completed. And that date property includes an end date for the deadline of the task. And then we have a person property to include the person responsible for completing the task. And then lastly, we have a checkbox property to mark when the task has been completed. So to add a timeline view, we'll click add a view and we can call this task timeline and choose the timeline format and click create. And this gives us our new timeline view. And you can see that it includes kind of two different elements. The first is this linear timeline that's marked by the year, month and days at the top. And each item is displayed as a bar along this linear timeline. And then to the left, we have a table with the title of each item. So when creating a timeline, the first step you're going to want to take is to specify which date property to use to place each item on the timeline. Now, when you just have one date property, it will default to that property and you won't need to adjust it. But if you have multiple date properties, you may need to choose one other than the default. So to do that, you'll come up to the three dotted menu up here at the top and you'll choose timeline by. And within this menu, you'll have the option to choose any of your date properties to timeline by. And of course here, we just have our time span property, which is our only one. And it includes an end date for each item. And therefore we can use it for the entire duration of each item. But we could also have separate date properties for the start and end dates or times, in which case we could toggle this option here and choose one date property for the start and another for the end. So the second step that you're generally going to want to take is to choose the properties to display within your table and within the bars of your items. So, so to do that, you'll come back into your three dotted menu and you'll choose properties. And so you can see here that you have options for showing properties within the table and then another menu for showing properties within your timeline. So with that, within our tasks example here, let's show, of course, the name of the task and let's also show the owner. And you can drag these properties to change the order in which they're displayed. So on our bars, let's let's show the task, let's show the owner, and let's show the completion status, and then drag the owner above completion. So here you can see that we have the owner displayed within the table, and then within the tasks themselves along the linear timeline, we can see the photo of the owner along with the completion status, which we can actually interact with right here within the timeline. 
So with your properties displayed as desired, you're typically going to want to define sorting rules for your timeline. So often that will be chronologically according to the start date because that's going to display your items in a nice kind of waterfall format. So if we choose our time span property here, that's going to order them according to when they start. And you can see that this creates kind of a nice waterfall here along our linear timeline. But in some cases, you may want to group your items by other properties. And you can do that by sorting. So if we were to change this sorting rule to the owner, you can see that we have all of our task owners here grouped together and that's just another way of viewing your items you won't have this nice waterfall format but this does help in the evaluation of capacity so for any of these items we can actually drag the bars to modify the value of that date property so lastly, within the timelines, let's look at scaling. The default's gonna be to view these items by month, but you can actually view them as closely zoomed as hours, if we're talking about events that take place within a single day, for example, or we can zoom out as far as year. So these tasks might be viewed nicely at the quarterly level. And if we go and we readjust our sorting, to the time span, you can see that we have a nice snapshot of our full project here. So let's move on to our next example, which is going to be events. Here you can see that we have all of the tournaments from the 2019-2020 PGA season. And so we have a few different properties here. Our title property is called tournament. And then we have two date properties, one for the start and one for the end. Remember, in the first example, we had a single property with an end date to specify the duration. And in this example, we have separate date properties. And then we have just a text property for the location. And then for the winner of each tournament, we have a relation property that links to a winner's database. So that database is down here. And if we open that up quickly, you can see that we have all of the winners from the 2019-2020 season. And they're displayed as a gallery with the headshot. But for each winner, the flag of his home country is the icon. And so that's going to create a really nice effect within our timeline. So once again, we will create a new view. And we can just call it timeline and choose the timeline format and create. So here we have our default timeline for our tournaments and we can start by specifying the timeline by. So remember in this instance, we're gonna use two different date properties for the start and end. So for the start, we wanna change this to start and then for the end, it's already set to end. Now, in this example, we might not necessarily want to see all of the tournaments listed within the table. So I'm just going to collapse the table and focus on the linear timeline. Now, because this spans a full year, it's probably going to be helpful to go ahead and view it just in the year format or, you know, quarterly might actually work better so that we get a better sense of the bars. And then I'm going to change the sorting so that we can view these in a more digestible way. Let's sort by the start date to give us our nice waterfall format. And you can see that we have these arrows here that show us where we have items off the screen. So if we scroll back here to the left, we can begin to see those items and we're now viewing them at the quarterly zoom level which allows us to view a pretty good number of them within a single shot. So now let's specify which properties we want to display within these bars. And the tournament is the title property that's gonna be required. Let's also just display the winner within each item. So you can see here that, remember, 
the winner property is a relation property that links to that winner's database. So it's going to pull in the items from the winner's database. And with them, it's going to pull in the icon of each of their pages, which in this case is the flag of their home country. So this creates a really nice effect here on the timeline. And there's a variety of different implementations that you can imagine for that effect. But this is one good example. So that wraps up our other simple example of Notion's timeline view. These are, you know, like I said, simple examples, but their principles can be really widely applied. So as you experiment with timelines, be sure to reference that template on Notion Market as it's accessible for free. And if you have any questions or if you encounter any obstacles as you experiment with these timelines, feel free to tweet at me at William Nutt.